Hi guys, welcome to Wildwood once again. My name is Holly, uh, I'm one of the senior keepers here at the park and we're gonna be doing a little bit of a question and answer session, but a bare speciality session today. So we're gonna um, hopefully get some questions from you guys uh, on Facebook, talk to one of our bear keepers and then have a uh, little arts and crafts session with our head of education, which should be a little bit different. Um, for those of you that have been watching, thank you so much. Um, and for chucking your comments down on our other question and answer sessions, it's been really, really great to be engaging with you. Uh, we're really missing uh, you guys here at the park at the moment, so it's nice that we can still bring the zoo to you at home uh, this way, albeit all virtual. Um, and thank you so much to all our members and all of our supporters that have been supporting us uh, financially at this really tricky time. Um, it's going a long way and it means so much to us and it just means that we can't wait to welcome you back. Um, I'm going to do two very special uh, shout outs to two fundraisers that we've been alerted to this last week. Uh, we had a guy called Lewis who's done his uh, Mount Everest climb or equivalent of on his staircase and he's raised uh, £1,500 for Wildwood which is awesome and then little Noah who's a seven year old uh, little lad doing his normal walk to Wildwood which I think is about 20 miles is it guys? 20 miles uh, but he's doing it in his garden and he's raised 800 pound for wildwood so thank you so much guys anyone else that wants to get involved in any fundraising or donating to wildwood just give our team an email on the website and they should be able to put you in the right direction but thank you to all those supporting us up until now um, it's been really really great uh, seeing you all sort of backing us in this really tricky time so we're going to talk about the bears today and like i said any questions you have once we're sort of in our chat please just chuck them down in the Facebook comments. And I have a team around uh, socially distancing as well, uh, but they're gonna try and get the questions to me as and when, and we'll answer as many as we can uh, and as quickly as we can as well. But we're gonna talk to our head keeper as well uh, about the two boys, Fluff and Scruff. So those of you that have been to the park before, um, you've probably uh, seen Fluff and Scruff or heard about them and the big rescue campaign that we did uh, about five or six years ago, was it, when they, when they arrived? Yeah. yeah? So, um, and they've completely changed uh, in, in their time since being at Wildwood uh, because they're in a much better place now than where they come from. Um, so if we welcome Paul on, did you want to come on? Yes. Hello. So this is Paul. Paul is our head keeper, but he's the go-to person to talk about the bears, uh, Fluff and Scruff, uh, yeah, your forte, aren't they, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Fluff and Scruff, where did they, where did they come from? Uh, what's their sort of background? They were kept in a canned hunting facility in Bulgaria, common scrap in Bulgaria. Okay. Basically they would be reared in the compounds, released into the nearby forests and the hunters would pay money to go and shoot them. Wow, well, so it was like a bred to Yeah, so you breed it to shoot it. Like pheasants in this country would be a comparison, but they yeah. use brown bears over there. A lot bigger. <laughs> well, it's, I don't really get it, but there yeah. you go. Uh, so the, uh, I believe that uh, Bulgaria wanted to change its ways and the place was shut down. Um, okay. Consequently there was, I believe, up to about 13, 14 bears in that facility and the people who used to run the facility just left. So were all the bears kept together or were they there all There were in? some that were together, some were separate. I believe the two we have here were kept separately so they'd never actually yeah. seen another bear before they met each other here. That's amazing. So, oh, we're being interrupted briefly by the storks. I don't know if you can see behind me. Um, so that clapping is part of their courtship and mating ritual. Um, they're definitely trying, they're going through the motions, um, but uh, you may have seen our video last week, week before, they were clapping for the NHS. So um, yeah, if they interrupt us, there's not really much we can do about it, but we don't really want to stop it either. So <laughs> it's all a good sign, put it that way. Um, yeah, so they were all kept, some were kept together, some were kept isolated, but Fluff and Scruff, we think, probably hadn't been Yeah, we think, we did bear. very little information because there's no reason to keep records for something you're going to go and shoot anyway. Yeah, so, so in terms of like birthdays and stuff. Yeah, birthdays is a bit of a guess. Um, it was a bit of a guess on, on how old they were when they came over because, to say, there was no records. So consequently, uh, we had to pick the when I came in, that man is uh, 60 right now. We made it all the year for them and went from there. So they have a start. Start. Um, so Fluff and Scruff, when, so on that day when they arrived, they obviously weren't together when they were housed at the, the refuge, um, the, the site. How long do you, did it take for you could put them together here? And how, and how long did that interaction process take? The introduction process probably took, I would say, eight to ten months. 
Wow. But they were separated for four because they had to go through their quarantine mm -hmm. together. So we had only the shut, it, shut off facilities for them. So we had to let one out and keep one in. And we had to do that while the main enclosure was being built. Wow. We were still at that point. Uh, I think it took about 10 months to complete. And we were still at that point where we were going to let one bear out okay. at the time. So when you look on the back, on the on the footage, we sort of got further forward with the bears than the actual enclosure was allowing us to do. Okay. So then we got right the way round to the following season, which would have been 2017. Yep. Early in the season, and we put them together then. Um, but they'd already decided um, who was in charge at that point. But that's a lot easier, isn't it? Because then you don't get this yeah, there, there explosion. Is, you, you, learn to, you learn your animals and you find out what they're like and who they are, uh, what, the, what the needs are. Yeah. They were suffering a lot from coughs, a lot of coughs going on. Okay. Coughs, snivels, conjunctivitis, a lot of um, niggles, lumps and bumps. You'd almost put it along with the old age and out of condition. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, consequently, when we did put them together, we thought that they were both fully fit. It turned out that Fluff had only just got over a, a bit of a bout of coughing, okay. and he wasn't as fit as we thought he was. And consequently, <laughs> he became the subordinate animal for about four months, and he got better, <laughs> and then he took over from uh, Scruff, and that's that's uh, where it stayed ever since. So, at the moment, Fluff is Fluff is the boss way, man way dominant in there. Cool. Um, and, they, and they get along really well now? They get along really well now. I, I think a lot of that is because uh, they know the structure that we keep them at. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are expecting. Um, they know what's going on and they, they're, they're, their whole outlook has changed because they have a structure that is seasonal, which is what they should be doing. Yeah, exactly. So in terms of the, um, the site in Bulgaria, obviously we've got two of the bears that were there. Did you know what happened to the other bears? We, we believe that two went to Germany, two went to Belgium, and four went to uh, Bears in Mind in, in Holland, uh, who were, well, they were then alertists, they're now Bears in Mind. Okay. Uh, and that is the people that are helping us with these and the, the new youngsters. The new youngsters, which we will get, we will get to them. Um, so essentially, all the bears that were at the site got, yeah. got, 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 yeah. got a happy ending. Some are doing far better than others. Yeah. It's a long time to be stuck in what was essentially a concrete, concrete yeah. box, wasn't it? Concrete box. Um, so there was a lot of, a lot of um, not so comfortable behaviours to watch. Yeah, a lot of stereotypes yeah. and, and uh, awkward behaviours. Um, not good for them, but we discussed that on many occasions. Yeah, stereotypes is like a whole <laughs> other topic. Um, so in terms of, um, you mentioned about having sort of coughs and, and colds and, and stuff like that. Do you get much of that now? We don't. We don't get any of that now. That is amazing. <clears throat> and there's, so, there's, a, there's a one big reason for that. Are we trying to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> um, so here at Wildwood, there's a really unique part of Scruff and Scruff's husbandry that the team here have developed and kind of flipped the lid on, on captive brown bear husbandry, um, and that's torpor. Um, and it's quite easily seen that the bears are completely different animals from pre-torpor to post-torpor. Um, coupled with the enclosure that you've given them and the diet you've given them, everything that, that you've chucked in that enclosure and given those bears is all sort of linked in. Um, but torpor's a, a massive part of their husbandry, isn't it? Yeah. It's a long-term part uh, because essentially they're off show for, what? Four months, four months of the year. Mm. Um, yeah, so this year you extended it, right? Yeah. Made it a month longer. So talk us through that. Why do bears go into torpor? Why did you want to try it with these or were you just feeding back from what I they knew were? you were going to answer that. <laughs> Um, I would put it akin to their year, it would be like your day. So you have to sleep, you have to eat, uh, but they do it in a year cycle as opposed to okay. a 24 hour cycle. Yep. So if you want to get some kind of an idea of what it, what it must be like, you have to fill your belly, then you go to sleep. Yep. Well, they do that over a season as opposed to a year, uh, over a day, yep. um, which means if you're going to put them into torpor, you need to stop your seasonal feeding when they come out of torpor right. to build and build and build and build and build them before they're ready to go back into torpor. Right. And if that isn't done, they won't go into torpor. So there's a lot of factors that mm. kind of have you're to line up. You're working right? eight, ten months in front of yourself. Wow, that's amazing. It's so it's a, it's a big commitment, isn't it? Yeah. 
And essentially but, for those four months that they're down. Yeah, and they will tell you, they will tell you when, when things are right and when things are wrong. Yeah. It's funny because this morning, Fluff was as nice as pie. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> and, but so Fluff yeah. can be a little bit yeah. grumbly. He's very much on Paul's side. If you're not Paul, you get a dirty look. Um, but yeah, he's been a little bit grumpy, hasn't he, he the last has, couple of days? We've recently just changed feeding three times a day as opposed to twice a day. Because mm -hmm. we're on split shifts, we can see a difference yeah. when we put into the, the other side of the team, started yeah. implementing. Now we're on three feeds a day. He's sweet and calm. As he, as he, he was hangry. We've mm. all been hangry. Yeah. I definitely get hangry. Um, so yeah, you can definitely see the tensions building behaviour wise from the bears and, yeah. and, and you use that to sort of indicate your husbandry, yeah. husbandry really, don't you? Because um, we're waiting for them to, to go into hyperphasia now. I mean, they're, they're at their lowest, lowest weight throughout the season right now, really. They don't look it though. No, they don't look like it's best. They've got an awful lot to put on, but, but um, we, we, we're pushing the barriers to see, the boundaries to see how light we can get them to how heavy we can get them, maintaining a good welfare standard. Yeah. Um, but the, the differences between the two, if we can emphasise those more, yeah. the nearer and closer to a natural rhythm they would be. Yeah. So it's just, it's all geared to making them as healthy, as they yeah. possibly and can be and, and doing what they should be doing as theirs which yeah. is going to sleep and yeah. um, just to explain what what type of for those of the people at home that don't know what hyperphagia is and what sort of how, how that differs to their diet the other time hyperphagia would be if it's in contact with my community i will <laughs> so a labrador <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they get quite angry as you say and and we're expecting that that not that flips it on, but they will gradually get hungry and hungry and hungry. We have to notice that and then we have to complement that by increasing the diet. Like I say, we're right at the moment, we're right on a, right on a, a level diet. Mm -hmm. Same increasing, we'll increase the bed, we'll change the pellet to a higher protein pellet and we'll start putting fish in. That won't be till middle of July, though, but that's when they're really winding it in. So you try and replicate with what you offer them, you try and yeah. replicate what they would be finding and, and yeah. eating in the wild, so, right? So. April's eggs. Right, for all the birds. No, no, yeah. <laughs> May May can be a few chicks. August will be insects. That's cool. on top of everything else that we we're still developing that all the way yeah. through as much as we can find. It. Cool. So fish is the main Fish is the main weight gainer. Weight gainer. So they'll go in, onto that in sort of August if you say. Yeah, it's middle of July. Uh, middle of July. Middle of July. For about August. six weeks. How, at most, how much fish go in there at a top, day? At top consumption, each bear will be having 6.3 kilograms of fish a day. Each bear? Each bear. And they're, big, they're fish like that, yeah, aren't they're they? They're 350 they're big fish. gram herring. Wow. So they'll be, they'll be at six, so you, you're, you're three feet a day and you'll be giving out approximately uh, a kilo, kilogram of feed a day, a, a feed or two kilograms of feed a day in each one. That all equates to 529 <laughs> kilograms <laughs> per year for both bears. So that's half a tonne? Half a tonne. Half a tonne of fish. Yeah, that's a monumental amount. approximately 1,200 quid. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot of money to yeah. feed two bears. For, for part of the season, that's not even that's not that's, yeah, that that's is, a couple that's, of months. Yeah, it's a hard and then you go season. what two months after that they're down and then you're not yeah. winding any food in. There's nothing in nothing there. Nothing goes in for four months. But it's a, it's an incredible it's an incredible species, isn't it? To yeah, be yeah. able to completely switch off and and then really up it again in the uh, same uh, year. That's exactly what they're meant to do, though. We yeah. don't have any problems with the poo losing its its stability. Yeah, we check that all the time. Yeah, it's part of a zookeeper's job, yeah. unfortunately. Poop and food. <laughs> <laughs> but they're happy, nice. they're enjoying the sun, they're yeah. getting an arm, yeah, they're, they're winding in the food. You, if, you can, if, you could, if you put in a change and then you see that change and what it's done to them, that's what you're at. That, that's exactly Brilliant. what Brilliant. I think that's what everyone, everyone at home needs to know. We've got questions. Thank you very much. Hi from Julia and Leslie. Hello. Uh, and I also have some questions from Fiona. Um, do you weigh the bears regularly? No. 
Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we have we have some scales, but I think if we put them in there, we wouldn't get them back out. Uh, they are they're they're big pallet scales. Okay. In the future, we will get them uh, into the. What we would like to do is to get them into a routine where we can weigh them on a regular basis, mm -hmm. because um, it's as interesting as it is. We've all done this by eye and good old zookeeper in the century. Yeah. But if, if we can then back that up with, with the weights, uh, more for the scientific value of stuff, yeah. it would be interesting to see. Not that the weights or the weighing of them will dictate how we yeah. act, because that's not the way we work the other way around. Well, you work with the bears, don't you? You the want bears, the bears so. to tell you when it's time yeah. and when it's not time. Rather and then than it should be about the same all, yeah. the, all the time. Exactly. So, Perfect. yeah, but it, it, in the future we will be. And then also on top of that we'll be doing a stretching exercises to see how fit they are at which time of the year so that if you're a, like fluff a bit lazy you won't but it can't be bothered we saw to, him run the other yeah, day. To, 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 <laughs> to stretch because you know i just can't be yeah um, or whether i'm hungry enough to do my stretches so right try a bit of training but we would like to call it a bit of uh what's the word Condition. Conditioning, that's the word. Yeah. yeah. Training always gets a bad rap, doesn't it? So it's yeah. Conditioning yeah. is the is the better word. But it's not. It's not. It's it's purely for a welfare yeah. point of view. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. I think that's really important to stress. Actually. Yeah. Fiona's got another question. Um, do they sometimes catch their own food? Um. I'm not sure. To be quite <laughs> honest, I think there would there would be no reason why they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. They certainly would eat bugs and everything else that we can provide them. Um, I know the ducks in there have to give it a wide berth uh, sometimes <laughs> because I think they would. Um, hopefully, we can we can keep them sustained so that they don't really yeah. bother with that. But uh, yeah, I don't see why they shouldn't. I haven't seen any squirrels stranded, and they'd have to be pretty quick. Yeah. They? <laughs> The thing is, they're opportunistic as well, aren't they? Yeah. So if, they, if there is an opportunity that they can, you know, if there's a you won't find in any nesting birds. There no, was, no, yeah. yeah. There was actually there was actually a, 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 a robin nesting behind one of the tree guards, and that oh, got really? completely destroyed. It oh. Had big bite marks down the side of it, <gasps> crimped, and then we realised the reason we did that is because there was a robin's nest behind. And he wanted the eggs. Mm. They love an egg, don't yeah, they? Oh yeah, they, they, they love uh, an egg. They disturbed the robins. They didn't come back. But <laughs> Um, yeah. There's no 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 birds nesting in there, but you've got no. two brown bears. What else? What else could you want? <laughs> um, so that that briefly brings me on. Uh, that or swiftly brings me on to our uh, new bears. So you mentioned earlier about the newbies, and we mentioned on a couple of live streams ago that we should be getting um, some new youngsters called Mish and Lucy. Um, they're in Belgium at the moment. They're not with us yet. Uh, they will be coming Touchwood to Wildwood Kent. But it's not going to be their forever home here, right? It's cool. going to, they're going to be here temporarily. Cool. Um, and then they're going to end up down at Escot. Um, so in terms of the background of these two young bears, that's another rescue, isn't it? But it's a different rescue yeah. situation to Fluff I'm to not particularly stuff. sure. Yeah. But I think it was a, a, a mother was killed in some pipeline. They've been orphaned they've been some, orphaned somehow. somehow. They, were tried, they were attempted to be uh, released and then it didn't work. So we, then they had two different traits of people and it had to be people in um, for, on a welfare ground really because they, they just would not survive because their young correct, bears yeah. do not do very well um, on their own um, so they are coming to Wildwood um, and that I think we are um, we have released uh, an appeal but all the information about that will be on our, we on our website the aim was to get them down to Escot by Easter mm. um, again with the current situation that will make change in terms of timing um, but we're pretty confident, 99.99999% sure that they will be they will be coming to Wildwood, starting out their lives here, so they can get a really good um, hit the ground running essentially yeah. with the bare expertise that we've got here already, right? Yeah. In terms of, we had a question I think last week about will you be putting the young bears in torpor? Um, yeah, well it goes back to what we said earlier. You probably need all season to get that achieved. Yeah, so not this year. So that's... probably not this year, um, but it would be it would be something you're going for. But we've got to train the keepers down there. We've got to learn about Shout their bears. Shout out to Escot. Yeah. Got to, <laughs> we're looking forward to, to uh, talking bears. You talk bears all day. Yeah, you, <coughs> you do just get sucked in. Um, so, yeah, the, the girls down there will be coming up, spending some time with us here, getting trained up. We'll understand them. They'll understand us. We'll, we'll pick things up that, you know, um, will be helpful in the future for them. Perfect. And then we'll get down there when they're down there just to make sure they're 
Doing all right. Yeah. But they're going to be very, very little yeah. babies. Um, I've got the bear t-shirt here. So if anyone um, has seen, oh look, I was going to almost model it. Ooh, almost um, it's part it. of the New Worldwood range. So uh, do take a look at that on our website because that's obviously uh, going to be helping to support us and this new bear um, rescue. And I've also got this nice little prop donated by our head of education. That's a bear footprint. That's a rear paw, right? Yeah. Of a code, yes, on the thought. Yeah, not not one of our fluff and scruff footprints. They're not as big as that. Um, but you can kind of see why people would think that Bigfoot exists because <laughs> that's pretty that's that's pretty, pretty phenomenal. Um, so in terms of like comparison, that's my hand at the front, and probably that's probably how big the the youngsters' back paw will be. So they yeah. are diddy. Um, yeah, they're they're only only little at the moment. So yeah, and they've got a mummy, and they've got to be taught everything about life. Yeah, they yeah haven't got a mum, so, so that's our job. <laughs> all all of that, all of that, you know, what would you say? Two and a half, three years, save your mum to learn everything that she knows. Yeah. And they're smart, so there's an awful lot they're going to be very naive on that we've got to teach them. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be very interesting. Um, and and hopefully you guys will be able to come and see them and enjoy them with us while they're here in Kent. Uh, but ultimately, once they're down in Escot, because they're going to have a fantastic facility down there as well. And they're going to follow the same sort of routine yep. that Fluff and Scruff will have here in terms of the torpor. Um, so yeah, it's really good for the for the future of bears here at Wildwood. Thank you very much, Paul. I think no that's problem. us done. Just, Thank just you. Just to say, the tunnel has now gone through the mound and out the other oh. side. <laughs> Those of you that have been to the park before, uh, you may have seen the den that they excavated in their large enclosure. We kind of tried to rebuild it. Didn't yeah, we? Yeah. The winter when they're in torpor is a is a brilliant opportunity for us to sort of do. Um, re-landscaping yeah. repairs of what they've destroyed and they and it took them a week yeah, of being around, out yeah. before they destroyed this den and now apparently yeah, they've gone completely through. completely out so uh, you you'll be able to see that when you come back to the park thank you very much no problem uh, so i'm going to pass this over well done paul <laughs> i'm going to pass this on over to our head of education langan who's going to be making some bear masks and he's got a fantastic prop with him which is a, a model of a bear skull which i think is amazing in terms of size So I've had to uh, promise Holly that I would actually say that uh, the mask we'll be making will not end up looking like this. Uh, again, this is a model prop. It's a skull from a brown bear. And again, this is probably Kodiak brown bear, so the biggest of all the brown bear subspecies. What we'll be doing today is we'll be making masks that look, hopefully, a bit like this. And we've tried to make it as straightforward as possible. What you'll need, uh, you'll need pencils, scissors, glue, uh, coloured card. Don't worry if you don't have coloured card, there is another option I'll tell you about at the end. And an assortment of household items. This will make sense in a couple of minutes time. So, when you watch a lot of shows uh, and they're showing you how to craft things, they have lots of complicated equipment. No, we're doing simple stuff because we're still in lockdown. So to start with, you need a piece of card that's the same colour as the mask you want to make, in this case brown, and <coughs> a nice round plate. Uh, you need one that will fit the sheet of paper or card and pretty much the right size for the mask you want to make. Some people have said that's a big improvement for me. So, I didn't get a laugh that time. So, first up, you put your plate on your sheet of card. Very simple, just trace round with pencil. Don't need the plate anymore. Then, first bit of cutting out, I should say there's a lot of cutting out. So if you are very young, you might want to get help from parents. Certainly, if you're little, you'll probably want safety scissors. So you cut all the way around the circle. And in best, best Blue Peter style, you should end up with something that looks rather like that. 
That's going to be the face. Don't worry about that for the minute. Just put that to one side. Next up, you need two round objects. In my case, this is a mug and a glass. They need to be round. One needs to be a little bit smaller than the other. This one uh, is going to be outside of the ear. So again, fresh piece of card. And you're going to need two of these. I'm keeping one hand on the mug to keep it nice and steady. And here's the second one. And again, when you've got those, you can start cutting them out. And as before, I've got one that we did earlier. So you should end up with two brown circles that look a bit like that. Next, you change colour. Well, you don't change colour, you change the colour card you're using. So now we're on to white with the glass. And again, I'm holding the glass gently but firmly in place and tracing round. If you've got uh, an adult assistant, they can always hold the glass in place while you trace around it. And again, now that you've got the two circles, you can start cutting them out. So you should end up with one set of white circles, one set of brown circles. Now, to turn these into the ears, you want to put the white circles in the middle of the brown circles, sort of like that, almost in the middle. This is where the glue comes in. Use a technical term, that's a nice wadge of glue. Flip that over and sort of gently press it and smooth it down like that. So it looks something like that. When you've got the two ears done, once you've let them dry a little, it's time to pop them onto the main part of the mask. So if you take the original big circle, what you want to do is glue these on at the top and slightly at the sides. Now this is the sort of tricky bit where you play around a little bit to start with to get a position you like the look of. That's about right. You don't want too much the ear showing or it'll look like Mickey Mouse. And we don't want to get sued by Disney. Um, that's about right. So again, this time only put a little bit of glue on on the side that's going behind the mask managed to get some on the table there. I should say, if you're doing this on a kitchen table, make sure you put something down first. Otherwise I'll get angry letters. And again, pressing down gently on the main part of the mask. Now you've got the one ear. This is always the fun bit of trying to get the other one sort of lined up. That's, yeah, that's about right. So you've got the same amount of white showing. If you really want to cheat, you can sort of draw a pencil line on. And I will say, do try to make sure that the glue is on both parts of that card, the brown part and the white part. I have so much respect for the crew on Blue Peter now. So there we go. Let that dry for a few minutes and there we go. Should now look like this. Now, there's one last container I've got, and that is going to be for the nose. Again, different coloured card. I can almost hear people thinking, where am I going to get all these different types of coloured card? As I say, there is another option, which we'll tell you about in a minute. Same again. Hold the container. Trace around. 
If you're wondering about the size of this, the size will make sense in a minute. Famous last words. And again, you can start cutting out the black circle. If anyone's read Treasure Island, this is not the black spot. But you will end up with a little circle like that. This is going to be the bear's nose. So size-wise, you really want something that's going to go in the middle of the mask, not too big, not too small. So it's going to be smaller than one of those white circles, but not too small. Again, you want it sort of just below the midline, not too far down, it'll look silly, not too far up, it'll look silly. Again, glue on the back. And do remember, if you put it on gently to start with, and you don't like where it is, you can move it a little. Again, then when you're happy with it, gently press it down and let it dry. So the mask should look like this at this stage, and if you might notice there's one thing that we're missing, eye holes. And this is where the glue stick has another use. Uh, you want the eyes to be sort of between the ears and the nose. I can almost hear Headkeeper Fool thinking, yes, that would be a good place for your eyes. Um, when you're happy with the position, again, trace around. And on the other side, you do exactly the same. This bit is probably the most tricky of all. So if you are young and if you do have parents helping you, this is where they get the sharp scissors to actually do the eye holes. Hopefully this is not going to be the bit where I actually punch myself on the live cast, but Again, don't do that on an antique desk or table or anything like that. And once you've made the start of the hole, then very gently you can start snipping round the outside. Don't worry if it goes over the inside of the ear. If I turn it round you can actually see it's catching the edge of the ear. That doesn't matter. When I was working on these yesterday I ended up with all these little sort of circles all over the floor, it looked really weird. So, that will start to give you your eye holes. Once you've finished that, you should have something that looks rather like this. Uh, what we've done next is we've actually put a couple little holes in the side and we put the, we turned over, brilliant. Um, we put some yarn through so you can attach it around the back of your head. We've used a sort of dark brown card because it's the same sort of colour as Scruff. Truth is, you can use any colour card that you have or you want. Yet again, another brown bear. I did say at the start, if you don't have lots of colours of card, do not worry. If you have white card, you can do everything I've done to this stage, but you just colour in the different bits. Uh, this was expertly coloured by me in Crown yesterday afternoon. So we've got the face in brown, the large parts of the ears are brown as well, and the nose is black. And that way you can do exactly the same steps and have a nice coloured mask, but just using the white card to start with. And that's the mask. Okay, so uh, thanks guys, and thank you to Langan for his little craft session. Anyone that has little ones that are making any of the masks, we'd love to see them, so do chuck them down in our comments. We'd really like to see them uh, later on. Um, and that's it for this week's live stream, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, massive thank you to everyone still supporting us uh, and engaging with us, we really, really appreciate it. Uh, we should be back next week. Um, subject is yet to be confirmed, but we're definitely doing one next week, so do tune in for that. Um, next next Thursday, 11 o'clock, same time, same place. I'll be here. Um, but thank you very much, and we'll hope to see you again soon.